Jesus, we love you. We worship and adore you. Glorify thy name in all the earth. Glorify thy name. Glorify thy name. Glorify thy name in all the earth. Good morning. Good morning. We welcome all visitors and members of our area faith community to the Church of Our Lady of the Lakes. The Knights of Columbus invite everyone to their pancake and sausage breakfast being served in the gathering area immediately following Mass. God has gathered us together to renew our efforts in sharing the life of Christ and being the love of Christ. So let us stand and greet the presence of Christ in one another. <clears throat> Please join in singing our gathering hymn, number 601, Rain Down. Rain down your love, God. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Good morning, everyone. Gathered in prayer, we come to the Lord's table because we know that the Lord is present in our midst when two or three are gathered in his name. So we welcome the presence of Christ who brings to us this day the gift of mercy and forgiveness. So let us begin by acknowledging our sins as we welcome God's life and mercy this day. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory. Go ahead. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good Adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, Take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, Amalek came and waged war against Israel. Moses, therefore, said to Joshua, pick out certain men and tomorrow go out and engage Amalek in battle. I will be standing on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses told him. He engaged Amalek in battle. After Moses had climbed to the top of the hill with Aaron and Hur. As long as Moses kept his hands raised up, Israel had the better of the fight. But when he let his hands rest, Amalek had the better of the fight. Moses' hands, however, grew tired. So they put a rock in place for him to sit on. Meanwhile, Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. And Joshua mowed down Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. The word of the Lord. and my 
salvation. Of whom should I be afraid? Of whom should I be afraid? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom should I be afraid? Of whom should I be afraid? The Lord is my light and my help. Whom should I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Before whom should I shrink? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom should I be afraid? Of whom should I be afraid? This I long to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom should I be afraid? Of whom should I be afraid? A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, remain faithful to what you have learned and believed, because you know from whom you learned it, and that from infancy you have known the sacred scriptures, which are capable of giving you wisdom for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for refutation, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that one who belongs to God may be competent, equipped for every good work. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and by appearing his kingly power, proclaim the word. Be persistent, whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Convince, reprimand, encourage through all patience and teaching. The word of the Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told his disciples a parable about the necessity for them to pray always without becoming weary. He said, 
there was a judge in a certain town who neither feared God nor respected any human being. And a widow in that town used to come to him and say, Render a just decision for me against my adversary. For a long time, the judge was unwilling, but eventually he thought, While it is true that I neither fear God nor respect any human being, because this widow keeps bothering me, I shall deliver a just decision for her, lest she finally come and strike me. The Lord said, Pay attention to what the dishonest judge says. Will not God then secure the rights of his chosen ones who call out to him day and night? Will he be slow to answer them? I tell you, he will see to it that justice is done for them speedily. But when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to As a child growing up, I would frequently, and I emphasize the word frequently, go to my mother for all kinds of requests, things that I was convinced that I truly, truly needed. I needed them as much as I needed air to breathe and food to eat and, well, clothes to wear. And so I would go with my requests, and in my frequent requests for things, my mother would normally respond to my requests by saying, no. <laughs> no. And of course, I, like the persistent widow in today's gospel, I would, I would be persistent. I would ask a second time, sometimes even three or four times. Might I add, at this point in time of the homily, I was a slow learner. <laughs> but my mother would be persistent in her response. No. Well then, I thought, well then, I got it. I'll go ask my dad. <laughs> so he would come in after a long day out in the fields, and I would hear the tractor coming into the yard, and I would rush out to greet him. And of course, he no more than got off the tractor, and I would ask him the same request that I had already asked my mother three or four or five times. And she had said no to, and I would ask my dad for the same thing. And like clockwork, like the keeping, like the keeping of time and seasons, my dad's response was always the same. Go ask your mother. <laughs> Why I couldn't figure that out, I have no idea. But, you know, persistence, I thought, would pay off. But it didn't. So what does that tell us about God in today's parable? Is God softer and more of a wimp than what my parents were? It seems to suggest that, doesn't it? After all, it seems the parable to be telling us that if we, if we are persistent enough in our requests to God for what it is that we think that we need, if we keep at it and if we why, eventually will wear him down and God will give us what it is that we need. It would seem that that's what the parable of the persistent widow is trying to teach us today. But my friends, that's not the point at all. Today's parable is not a parable about being persistent in prayer. Today's parable is about you and I being persistent in justice, in seeking justice. That's what the relentless widow was desiring as she would go to the judge, render a just decision for me against my adversary. The relentless widow, the persistent widow, was seeking justice. So today's parable is about justice and the need for it, not only for ourselves individually, but for the human race, where we see injustice, we are called upon then to speak up and to act out, so that injustices 
might be corrected. Today's parable is about you and I being persistent in it. And today's parable reminds us and gives us an image of God that you and I don't often think of. And the parable is telling us today that one of God's images, one way in which we can see God present in our world today is through the widow, the powerless widow. Because in the time of our Lord, widows had absolutely no rights. Once they had lost their husband, they had pretty much lost any way of functioning in the world because, of course, they had no rights themselves and, well, they just were powerless. So what does that tell us about God? God chooses to become like the relentless, persistent widow, powerless, but yet persistent. And that's what we celebrate when God, of course, gives us the gift of his son, Jesus Christ, who came to take on our human flesh and form, to take on our powerlessness. And Jesus would, would be able to show the power that comes from being powerless as he would hang upon the cross, as he would suffer and die for our salvation and for our hope. So Jesus takes on this image of the relentless widow, and he invites us that there's great power in being powerless, and the power that comes is, of course, then we need to recognize that we need a source greater than ourselves to overcome our being powerless. And that power then comes from God alone. That's what the widow understands is that with God's help, with God's strength, with God's presence at work in her life, why she can continue then to let her need for justice be known. And so you and I, my friends, are called today, as we are every day, to take on that powerlessness in our own lives. And to recognize that as much as we like to be in control, as much as we like to seem to think that we have great power at work in our life, while well, that power only comes in and through God, working in and through us. That's why we need to pray always and never lose heart, as Jesus says. It's about keeping that channel open so that God's grace and strength might work in and through us, so that we might become the voice for those who are voiceless, that we might become the hands of those whose hands have been tied because of some injustice that happens in the world. My friends, you and I must be persistent, as the widow was in today's gospel, in speaking out to all politicians, no matter what, no matter what uh, they might profess, if they become self-serving, we must speak out. You and I are called to be persistent as the widow is, to make sure that our children are protected and cared for and that they have security in our schools and places where they go. You and I must be persistent as the widow is in calling for justice for the immigrants who seek a place that they can call home, where they can be safe to raise their families. You and I are called to be persistent as the widow was in being voices for those who are experiencing injustice in our own time and in our own place. And you and I will only have the strength to do that if we allow the channel of God's grace through the gift of prayer to work in and through us so that we then might be persistent. Because as we are told by Paul in today's second reading, we must proclaim the word whether it is convenient or inconvenient. And we proclaim that word because we believe that that word has a profound effect for everyone, especially those like the widow who seek justice.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We lift our voices in prayer to the Lord our God, confident that he who is our help will hear us as we pray. That Pope Francis and all priests and religious will lead us in the perseverance of prayer. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That our political leaders will join together to support medical care for the poor, just wages for those in low-paying jobs, and relief for those affected by natural disasters. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we will continue to trust in God's endless love in spite of the personal difficulties and challenges we face. And for favorable weather for the harvest season and safety for all farmers, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That families will take time for prayer in the home, thanking God for blessings and asking for our help in daily duties and life, and for God's abundant blessings on the marriage of Mary Keller and Levi Zano, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That our loved ones and all who have died, especially Ronald Schemick, father of Joe Schemick, may find rest in the loving arms of Jesus, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer that we may gratefully lift up our petitions to God, as well as offer all of daily undertakings and activities, and for the intentions written in our book of prayer requests, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. O Lord our God, we come before you today. We lift our voices in prayer, asking that you hear our petitions, those spoken, those we hold in the depths of our heart. Answer them according to your will. For we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. During our collection and preparation of gifts, please join in singing number 395, These Alone Are Enough. Love and grace, 
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, Lord, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and sent humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once were the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time, on the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. It is some of the way when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again, until Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and to whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, with all the bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our sisters and brothers, inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly, after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our sisters and our brothers who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead, whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us that when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints. We shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. Together we now join in praying to, for, to our Heavenly Father for the gift of daily bread as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us share with one another the sign of peace. Take away the 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those now called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join in singing number 629, Blessed Are They.
blessed are you, holy are you, rejoice and be glad. Yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are they who seek peace, they are the children of God. Blessed are they who suffer in faith, the glory of God is theirs. Rejoice and be glad. Blessed are you, holy are you. Rejoice and be glad. Yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who suffer hate all because of me. Rejoice and be glad. Yours is the kingdom. Shine for all to see. Rejoice and be glad. Blessed are you, holy are you. Rejoice and be glad. Yours is the kingdom of Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Before we go, if you were not here this past weekend and you did not receive a bulletin or an insert with the letter from Father Jerry announcing that effective January 1st, he's going to half time in the changes uh, in our area faith community that will result because of that uh, decision of his. Uh, there are copies of that letter uh, and those changes that are outlined uh, at the entrance of the church as you leave today. Again, that's for those of you who may not have been with us uh, last weekend to receive that information. It's available as you leave church this morning. Our Mass is now ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Please join in singing number 553, Sing Out Earth and Sky. So righteous one, come and bring our love to birth in the glory of your Son. Sing out earth and skies, sing of the God who loves you. Raise your joyful cries, dance to the life around you. Come, O oh God of wind and flame, fill the earth with righteousness. 
Teach us all to sing your name. May our lives your love confess. Sing out earth and sky. Sing of the God who loves you. Praise your joyful cries. Dance to the life around you. Come, O oh God of flashing light, twinkling star and burning sun, God of day and God of night, in your light we all are one. Sing out earth and sky, sing of the God who loves you. Praise your joyful cries, dance to the life around you.